Here's some chilling news. Just what you want to hear as you head back to the beach this summer. Sharks are not only deadly, they're smart too. And the one we fear most, the great white, is the smartest of them all. That's what the experts are telling us based on the latest research into the predator's brain and its thought patterns. That's right, they can think. Great whites aren't just mindless killers, they're tacticians that actually plan their attacks. And I can tell you, when you get up close to these monsters, you don't need a science degree to know why they're called the ultimate assassins. On your right, on your right, on your right. Where did that one come from? I'd always thought they were mindless killers. No matter where you look, they're always coming from behind you. And they're so big, close up. Your teeth. And my first moments in this cage do nothing to dispel that idea. Oh, oh he's hit the cage! He's hit the cage! <laughs> you okay? Yeah. The tail, wow. What a hit. We're at the Neptune Islands off Port Lincoln, South Australia, where the great whites come to hunt seals. Yeah, when they mean business, they mean business. There's no doubt about that. But despite their menacing appearance, my diving partner, shark researcher Ian Gordon, has assured me I'm safe. I'm not lunch, they're simply checking me out. Wow, what an amazing experience. You can reach out and touch them. They're that close to you. You can see their teeth, their extraordinary eyes. It really is a privilege to be that close to these kings of the ocean. They're just such amazing animals. Every time we think we look like we're starting to find out something about them, we realise that we know nothing and we have to learn more. According to Ian Gordon, until now, our thinking about great white sharks has been skewed by our fear of them, a fear which has created countless myths. But on this journey, I'm about to see them in a whole new light. To find out just how sophisticated they really are. How their bodies are perfectly engineered, and how their intelligence and a mysterious sixth sense makes them such ferocious predators. White sharks are like assassins. They have to learn how to be able to understand what their prey is doing to be able to effectively catch them. So you're saying they're smart? They're smart, yeah. Okay, so what we've got here is the brain of a great white shark. So much smaller than I thought. <laughs> I know, it's pretty awesome though that something that small can uh, do all those really complex behaviours. It's only now that researchers like Dr Kara Yopek are starting to piece together a picture of just how complex their behaviour really is. Yay, finally got through to the brain. It's really, really interesting. For a start, great whites actually do think. So what you're saying, the great white thinks about its prey, and what strategies to use when it attacks. I mean, it calculates things like risk because they're hunting um, prey that could potentially hurt them. So it does have to, um, has to calculate the risk involved, has to calculate how to capture its prey because, I mean, what does a shark need to do to survive? It needs to, I guess, eat and, and mate. Nowhere is their ability to plan attacks better illustrated than at the seal colonies off the South African coast. Here, the great whites have learned how to stalk and surprise their prey, charging vertically up from the depths to seize unsuspecting seals. I think they're amazingly intelligent animals. Um, they've just really tuned in to how they need to survive best in that environment and be really, really successful. This bit here is the cerebellum. Uh, as well as thinking, the key to the great white success as a predator is its extraordinary agility and speed, controlled by this part of the brain called the cerebellum. 
So quite complex behaviour and strategies, that's what mm. it's saying. Complex motor behaviours, I would say, yeah. Great Whites combine all their physical prowess in a whole range of hunting tactics, including what's called spy hopping. They actually stick their heads out of the water to have a better look around. They can perform an amazing repertoire of behaviours. Their sense of vision is really acute. and They clearly use it in a very interesting way by popping the heads out of the water. It's pretty sophisticated, isn't it? I think it's amazing. I think they're amazingly smart. Um, to have come this far and to have adapted these skills is just absolutely... It really blows me away, personally. The Great White's formidable arsenal includes the ultimate underwater tracking system, a maze of super-sensitive paws on their faces that give them a sixth sense, the ability to detect prey kilometres away. A heartbeat is going to send off electrical signals and shark can pick that up, which is absolutely an unbelievable thing for it to be able to do, a tiny dipole sending off an electric impulse, um, and it can sense that and, and follow it back to that item. You can see where, he, where he's bitten through the board. He's bitten it cleanly, I guess the word is. You can really see the teeth marks of the shark, can't you? Very, very clear. Yeah, you can see the individual individual marks right along here, each separate teeth. So they're pretty big teeth. For all their impressive weaponry, great white sharks can also be remarkably cautious creatures. They often taste before they dine which explains why some people, like Jay Perrin, survive their terrifying encounters. I was actually paddling at that the time and I've been struck from underneath and knocked off my board to the left, but it's, it's hit me at great force from underneath. Jake's attack while surfing near Port Lincoln shows how a great white's intelligence can override its basic instinct to kill. The four-metre shark smashed into Jake at a speed approaching 40 kilometres an hour. And that's when I've looked back and I've seen the tail and it really thrashing and the dorsal fin. And the shark's spun round and I've, so I've been sitting on its uh, actual pectoral fin and at that stage I started punching it because it was very close and even kicking it because I was sitting it. So I was punching it as hard as I could and kicking it. In the frenzy, the shark took a bite out of the surfboard and swam off. But Jake, still attached to the board by his leg rope, was dragged through the water. That must have just been terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> it was... Well, I knew, I knew what was happening. I knew the shark had bitten the board and was pulling it along, so I knew exactly what was going on and I was just, you know, what next? But then something remarkable happened. The shark literally had second thoughts. Fearing Jake's violent defence could mean he was a serious threat, it called off the attack. He was left with deep cuts to his right arm and right leg, but alive. Yeah, I'm just glad or lucky, whichever way you want to put it, that this bite, this massive bite, wasn't on me, because I think if it had a bitten me the same way it bit my board, it would have been a different story, you know, it would have been all over. There's no reason to say it couldn't have, if it took you there. No. You've got to admire the purity of the design. In terms of biology and engineering, it's, it's an exquisite construction. It really excites you when you talk about these creatures, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's a bit sick, maybe, huh? More than anyone, scientist Dr Stephen Rowe can tell Jake Heron just how lucky he was to survive his encounter with this ultimate killing machine. From the supreme engineering of their jaws to the piston-like muscles in their tails, he's in awe of the Great White's exquisite design. This is a, a design that's been honed and, and improved on incrementally over millions of years. Um, this, is a, this is a design that works. The jaws and the teeth, they're an engineering model. It's amazingly sophisticated. It's a very, very complex um, uh, system. Dr Rowe is using advanced computer software to determine the bite force of great whites. It's world first research and his results are clear and terrifying. For this guy, uh, which is a, a juvenile sub-adult, we have a uh, bite force estimate of about 220 kilograms, which is a lot. But for the largest 
my predictions would be well over a tonne, so about 1,100 kilograms. And among animals I've looked at, that, that certainly would make it the biggest biter on the planet. To put that in perspective, another way of looking at it is a really big African lion would bite, um, would bite with about 300 kilos. As the jaws open, the, the gums basically pull those te teeth out, so the, t the teeth flick out. Okay, you don't see it in a, in a fixed sort of dry specimen like this, but if you look at a, a wet specimen, bang! Okay? So you've got 300 flick blades here, bang! Here he comes! Whoa! <laughs> now, if we haven't frightened you enough, there's one more scary fact you should know about great whites. They can turn up anywhere coastal shallows to the middle of the oceans. Apart from everything else, great whites are like submarines. Their giant livers act as buoyancy tanks. They can even control their body temperature at great depth, all of which gives them an enormous range. Chillingly shown in this home video. These tourists were swimming off the back of boats 3,000 kilometres off the South American coast. And out of nowhere, a great white appeared. Heather Boswell survived, but only just, after the four-metre shark took her leg. We as humans are only occasional visitors to the ocean, and if we go in there, we have to take the risk of going into a wild environment that we can't control. So you have to wear the consequences? Yes, we have to wear the consequences. Which brings us back to the Neptune Islands near Port Lincoln. Okay, you're right. In you go. Ian Gordon's been known to dive in these parts without the cage. But I'm not so sure. Their eyes, you feel like they're watching you all the time. After all I've learnt, even if these sharks aren't mindless killers, they're still big, with row upon row of serrated teeth, and not forgetting their bone-crushing jaws. I think it's perhaps better for me to admire them from behind bars. You've jumped out of the cage and swam with them, though. I mean, is that the most stupid thing you've ever done? My parents think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yet to me, these animals terrify me, and I think they do most Australians. The whole shark thing and the fear thing is it, it can eat you alive, and, and that's not within our, our um, consciousness here in Australia, having to deal with animals that can eat you alive. The ultimate assassin. The ultimate assassin, yeah. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.